Welcome back to the channel, guys, and welcome back to a video we've been wanting to do for quite a while, haven't we? Absolutely ages. This is two special middleweights, really. We've got the 890 Duke R, the Super Scalpel. It is. And we've got the brand new 2023 Triumph Street Triple RS. So uh, in this video, we're going to compare these two bikes back to back. We've got some nice weather for a change. Normally Ooh. it's raining, isn't it, on our, on our <laughs> bloody test. We've got Finally. some beautiful weather. It's a lovely evening. We're going to take both these bikes out for a little bit of a thrash and see which one we think is the best. It's going to be close. It's going to be really close. It's going to be close. Isn't it? Different but close. Different but close. These, these yeah. are both fantastic. There's no loser here because these are They're really both good, fantastic aren't they? Exactly. bikes. But we will let you know which ones we would buy out of the two. So that sounds of interest. Get yourself a nice cool shandy and chopsy. Roll the intro. Hello viewers, Gregorio here. Gregorio is here. Supporting for, Chops here. Supporting me for another one of our comparisons. He's, he's becoming a, a indispensable. Bit on, of a feature. Ind, indispensable on these uh, comparison that. I reviews. I don't know about that. <laughs> I <laughs> do my so. best to help. What are they like though? Such a cool pair of middleweights, aren't they? Yeah, I think these two are the top tier. I think the, the Monster SP is the other one, I yeah. guess, which is the yeah. top tier middleweight naked. And uh, yeah, they do look. Uh -huh. Absolutely uh -huh. fantastic. Yamaha MT09 SP though, we, we did decide that was a, also a, a worthy contender. Not that I've ridden it actually, but it gets really, really good feedback, doesn't it? Because you, you've actually owned both of these bikes before, haven't you? Uh -huh. <laughs> every, embarrassing every review we do, yeah. so you've had one of these, haven't you? <laughs> I've owned both of these bikes, although the Street Triple RS that I owned was, uh, I think it was the original yeah yeah model. yeah it, yeah um, the original rs it, yeah it was an rs but it was still the 765 so it was the yeah. but it was the first gen of the 765 and i have indeed owned a first generation not that they've been out that long of the 890rs and uh, the 890r was an amazing bike obviously the new street triple got some changes this year the suspension has been adjusted it's got 20 millimeter space on the rear the styling i think the new styling looks really good with this tank i, I love I the agree. tank shape i love these sort of cow pieces and the belly pan I think it looks, to quote you, a handsome motorcycle. It's very handsome, and I think even the headlight shapes look very mean and aggressive. This, even the little cow there, I think looks really nice. It's, yeah. it's finished very well. It's got better brakes now. They style lemurs as well on the style lemurs. Yeah, it so was. They, um, so they, they both got style lemurs. They used to be M50s, I think, on the on the RS. One of the things that the KTM has that I would highly recommend what? are the tyres, the Michelin Pilot Cup Twos. Uh, sorry, Power Cup Twos, rather. They are unbelievably good tires they they don't last amazingly well but if you're looking for summer fun with all the grip you could ever want and more they are unbelievable super courses though mate so, super uh, courses i'm not going to diss super courses they're great tires as well but but i honestly think that the power cup twos are the best tire oh, i've ever did ridden you, you with. Them. I, yeah i do and actually they look it's not us that's done this yet but they look fairly well well-used, well, these that tires. Was me, in terms mate. Of that was me on my that, first that ride. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> look at that, no chicken strips here, is there? No, these, these have seen some action, and they're going to see some more action, a bit in, a action in a minute. Let's turn off the uh, bit, bit of wheelie, we have the wheelie control off, shall we? So to do that on the Triumph, you've got to go, well, I've set up the track mode with the, wheelie, with the traction control off in, in the track mode. So unfortunately, you can't separate wheelie and traction on either of these bikes, they're, 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 I mean, they're just in tracks. Even though they both got IMUs, you can't separate. So as they've got IMUs, they could really have separated it. Again, not wishing to sound like a riding hero, but I don't think you really desperately need traction on the road with these bikes because they're not, they're so easily to, easy to manage, aren't they, power-wise? Oh yes, so we do like a light front end and these bikes are both perfect for that, aren't they? This is what these, these bikes are all about fun, aren't they? I think if you're looking at buying either one of these machines, it's all about fun and smiles per mile. I agree. I actually think, you know, without even riding the Triumph now, obviously I've ridden the earlier one, having owned one a few years ago, it's it's definitely a little bit more serious a bike, I think, than the KTM. The KTM, the moment you get on it, it does feel like a grown-up's toy, doesn't it, in every sense of the word. I think the Triumph is probably targeted as a slightly wider audience maybe yes you know it, it's, it's still obviously focused on being sporty 
but I think everything about it, the power to let where you've ridden it, yeah, but you know, it's not as punchy as that KTM. That KTM's all about punch off the throttle, isn't it? And you know, that parallel twin, I know we get a lot of criticism on parallel twins, but I think that parallel twin in that 890 is the best parallel twin you can buy in any motorcycle. For those of you watching that haven't tried this particular engine, it is an absolute gem. It's got character, it's got grunt everywhere. It's so easy, so flexible, it's brilliant. The ride in position on the Triumph, because they've increased the, the shock length, it's got, definitely got a bit more on your, on your wrist now. So it's a little bit, oh, it's really? not as wristy as the M1000R, by any, by any stretch, but it's, it's definitely more weight on your wrists now. And the suspension, you know, the setup's perhaps a little bit more sporty feeling than it used to be. God, listen to that howl. It sounds good, I can hear it from here. What's the ride position like on the Duke, Greg? It's really comfortable, I'm six foot one, and it's slightly canted forward, not too much, but you're certainly not bolt upright. The pegs are medium height, I'd say. The seat's lush, really wide, really comfortable. Yeah, I'd say it's sporty, but not extreme. And it feels to me like it would fit a lot of different people, and it's a lot roomier than the bike looks like it will be because it looks physically quite small but it's actually surprisingly roomy they're spacious enough even for a couple of big ones one thing i don't like on the triumph and i did mention it in my first ride is this dashboard you know you've got four different styles and all of them are, are terrible <laughs> all are terrible <laughs> they were, it's got this funny rev counter layout i don't know why we can't just have a a nice rev count an easy to read analog looking rev counter like was on the original speed triple that original speed triple rs had that lovely dashboard lovely layout i just don't know quite what's going on with the revs i mean if, we, if you asked me what the revs this was doing i'd be able to say well it's sort of half revs all the digits are really small as well really difficult to read and i don't think it's just my eyes because i'm getting old <laughs> the ktm by contrast has no such luxuries you, you know what you've got is what you've got but actually, as far as I'm concerned, it works pretty well. Yeah, it's clear and easy, you know? isn't it? Yeah, it's clear and easy. Rev, uh, rev counter sweeps across the top. Massive speedo. You just glance down and see it really good. And gear position indicator, happy days. Poo. Oh, poo in the road. Put the shit in the road. The poise of the Triumph is lovely. I mean, uh, it's quite neutral feeling, like the, the handling on the Triumph. I mean, you go on the brakes, the brakes are incredible with the styling mechanic. The, the brakes are incredible on both these bikes, aren't they? It's, it's one of the best brake setups out there or on the 890 and on this. I think only bettered by the uh, M1000R in my view. But the brakes are amazing. The, the poise and the suspension setup's amazing. That WP stuff's pretty good as well, though, Greg, isn't it? On that. Honestly, I, I think this KTM, the front end feel, is so good. Honestly, it's just, you know exactly what's going on. You can just go as fast as you want into any corner. And the, you know, it's really, you, know, you can brake really late. It's, it's amazing actually, really good. And it's, it handles fantastically this WP suspension, but it's not in any way harsh. There's no crashiness, the shock is nice. There's no squatting when you get on the power. Lovely. It is closed. Oh, it is closed. Let's have a little bike swap as we've reached a closed road. Oh, blimey, it feels... The seat is much harder on this. It feels really firm. Really firm. It's a completely different riding position. Completely... Much more upright, actually. So the Triumph seat is more... is narrower. This is, this is wider, but... but firmer. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, it's very aggressive. The 890, isn't it? The Triumph feels positively soft by comparison direct comparison it feels very firm the rear of the bike and the suspension feels firmer that that engine delivers an amazing amount of grunt doesn't it yeah and the brakes are perhaps a bit more aggressive as well oh they, they are the, yeah there's, there's definitely more lever travel on the triumph to, to slow down and this is definitely the triumph has got it feels a little bit more squatty and a bit divey on the brakes and again relative relatively yeah the, the ktm is so super stable when you're on the gas or braking hard and the triumph the triumph is definitely a more plush and more rounded experience i think the 890 is very focused isn't it i mean i've just literally jumped on it and you can tell straight away it's it's egging me on to go faster it's just it's, it's got that racy feel 
But it's not, do you agree, it's not crashy, is it? You're right, it's not crashy, it's, it's sort of gliding, and these are bumpy roads, these as well. And it glides over it, doesn't it, but it just handles it. It's obviously got fantastic damp spring rates in there, isn't it, whatever, really nice. Uh, and I, I, think, I think the Triumph will appeal to more people. It's just a little bit softer and a little bit more, I don't know what the word is I'm looking for, really, but a bit more manageable, whereas the KTM is, it feels like a race bike, I think, in a way. And I think this engine just really works with this chassis as well, just having that, that instant grunt, I mean, the way it picks up, out the corners. I mean, I know it said at the beginning, but this this power. I don't normally really like parallel twin motors, but this one's a different kettle of fish. You know, it's, it's, a peach, really, you know? it's, a peach. it's so aggressive, and it just sounds so good as well. It pops and bangs as well. Yeah, I have to say the 890 is uh, is very impressive, actually. Very impressive. I know we, we are both hooligans, so we've got to bear that in mind. Yeah, but it's not just about that though. And, and again, I think even if you're not necessarily that way inclined, you should definitely give the 890 a go. If you're looking for a reasonably priced, relatively speaking, you know, capable naked, give it a go because it's actually, it's quite a safe bike to ride because it handles so well and the brakes are so amazing. It's actually really easy. And I think that, you know, you'll get into less trouble on that KTM. So even if you're not that experienced in relative terms, I think you'll still like it. It's so aggressive. It does encourage you to go a little bit faster than you should, maybe. That'd be one of my only criticisms, but you can't blame the bike for that. I mean, that, that's the rider's fault. <laughs> exactly. But if you're that way inclined, it's a naughty bike. Don't think you're buying a middleweight. There's one there, look. Don't think you're buying a middleweight to be sensible if you buy one of these. Oh, it's definitely got, yeah, it can definitely stir the wrong emotions for a bit of bloody hoonage. Let me come through so you can see this beauty. Let's have a look at her. I can see her in the mirror. I do like those headlights in the mirror. They look mean, those like eyebrow. Yeah, they look good, don't they? I think the Triumph is a slightly physically bigger bike. You look, it, it, I, you look a little bit big on the 890, a tiny bit. I look too big on it. Well, not too big, but it, it looks like a bigger bike when you're on the, you're on the Triumph there. Because the tail's a bit wider, it's, it's physically bigger, I think. I think the Triumph, though, honestly, it is it's impressive. Yeah, you know, everything just works, it feels comfortable. You know, it's, it's, it is really good. I, I think I prefer it, and I've said this before, to the Speed Triple, actually. Um, I don't know why, I just think it's a better road bike all round, even though it's got less power, it just sort of seems to work, it's a perfect blend I think for the road. Yeah, and I mean, you know, that's almost 130 horsepower now, the, the new street, there's seven extra horses because, you know, because of the Moto2 work that Triumph have done, you know, they, they've developed that motor for Moto2, so they know how far they can push that, you know, in, in street form and they've unlocked another seven brake from it. It's 130 horsepower in a 188 kilo motorcycle. You don't need it, you know, realistically, you don't need any more than that. You may want more from your hooligan side, but the reality of it is, for the road, you do not need more than that. That's really nice. Clutch action's lovely as well. When you pull away on this, it's really nice, progressive clutch, really smooth. It's, it's actually very nice. And only a cable clutch as well, but it's lovely. It's nice in town, isn't it? It's got sort of a straight four quality to it a little bit in town. It's very smooth, very easy. The 890, when I have, I have got it in sport mode, so it is quite aggressive, but it's so much punch with that engine, you've got to finesse it a little bit, I'd say. You don't have to so much on the Triumph. Just going back to the differences between the two, the suspension on the Triumph, I, I definitely don't like as much as the KTM. It's, um, it's sort of softer from a handling point of view, but the, the ride normally is firmer. Yeah, it, yeah. It, does it does crash a bit more. I mean, I've, I've not Definitely. crashed over anything since I've jumped on this. I thought I was going to. I think the suspension is superior on the... This WP suspension is, is very good. And I do think it's actually superior on the Duke. I think that's one of the reasons why this bike is more expensive. Even though it's got Olins on the Triumph. I think this WP stuff is actually very, very good. I would go as far to say that the suspension on the KTM Duke, the 890R, that is, not all of them, the 890R, I think it is probably one of my favourite suspension setups of any bike. Roll on test, third, third gear. gear, let's drop it down to 30, you do the counting, does that work perfectly? Three, two, one. Yeah, 
Yeah, this is pretty close. I think once we swap and we've got the lighter rider on the Duke, I think you're going to kill the Triumph on the pickup. Really? Yeah, it's pretty close there. You were pulling a little bit, but we know the weight difference makes a massive impact, doesn't it, to these roll-ons. So you think the KTM will be quicker? I think the KTM will be quicker on the, on the off, but I think as the revs increase, I think the Triumph will pull at yeah, the yeah. top. The Triumph is so smooth, though, when you ride it just as you would if you owned it. It's very refined. Uh, I do find the, the KTM a bit more aggressive and needs a bit more finessing, as I said. You know, if you're riding this all day, it, it may be, it might be a little bit more tiring than the Triumph. Would be my only criticism. Apart from that, I think it's absolutely fantastic. I'm not entirely sure I'm in love with the headlight of the KTM either. No, I think the styling's a whole other thing, isn't it? And, and I do think the Triumph looks better. I do, you know, I think this, and even sat on the bike, the view from riding this, it looks very short. It doesn't look as nice from a, you know, when you're actually on there looking down across the, the look of the machine, you know? Anyway, enough of that. We've got some twisty bits. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this, this 890s. Absolutely incredible, isn't it? And the twisty stuff. It's, it's, it's effortless. Effortless, this the 890. Yeah! <laughs> I want to have a go on the 890. <laughs> oh, let's have another little swap back so we can we go up and down again and we'll try the other bikes up and down that bit of hill climb. So we can really. This is what the, on these. What, this is what these bikes are about, isn't it? That agility and the twisties, the fun factor. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We're at a little famous hill climb. This time I'm on the KTM 890, Chopsy on the Triumph, and let's see what it's like. Caught him by surprise. <laughs> well, it feels totally different. It's totally different. They're they're both oh. good, but they're just different, aren't they? Oh, I prefer the handling. The handling of the KTM is at another level. It is another level. I do, I do agree. It def definitely feels softer to try. The suspension is definitely softer. Oh, it's amazing. The 890 is called the Super Scalpel for a reason, isn't it? It's, God, is it it's, def it's definitely sharper than the Triumph. Not saying the Triumph's bad. Really? But yeah, go on. But it's definitely, definitely sharper, the 890, I think. The engine on the 890 as well, it's, it's sort of addictive. It's so good. I mean, this is totally stock, you know, with a stock pipe on it, stock can, and it still sounds good. And the handling, I mean, it's, it's quite a bit better. It's firm, isn't it? it it's, there's less transition of weight, sort of forward and back. Yes. It's, it's a, it, that's part of it, isn't it? When you go on the brakes, it definitely is more stable. Without a doubt. And yeah, I mean, you, it, say, uh, you say it's firmer, it's, it's not, it's just, it's better. <laughs> it's, it's, it, no, it's more, it's more sorted. It is. It is more it, sorted, yeah. It's where the money's gone, it's where a lot of the effort's gone, and it, and it shows. Yeah, and, and that's not to say the Triumph is bad, but it's, it's, I would say it's, it's a different level, the KTM. The Triumph's very, very good, and you don't really notice it until you back to back it like that. But it, it's definitely, it's, you're right, it's definitely better on the 890. There's no other way of putting it. They're both good. They are both very good. <laughs> but you're right, the, the 890 has got it. The 890, if, you, if you're looking for the ultimate handling bike out of the two, it's the 890. And the character of the engine is also amazing. Yeah, I, I think that's good. Yeah, I don't know. The, I think the, the triple's beautiful though. <laughs> I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure about that on the engine. I'll agree, I'll agree the handling. 
is definitely superior. But I do no, no, like, no, no, no. I do like no, the I triple. I didn't say the engine was better. They're both good engines. But I, but the engine is very very engaging on the KTM. It's got it makes a really really good noise. That 270 degree crank, the character, the the the, the sort of grunt that it's got. You know, you'd think it's a bigger bike, I think, actually, engine-wise. It's not vibey either, is it? It's not a vibey bike to ride. It's, it's very smooth, considering it's like 270 degree crank and, and it's parallel twin. It's very smooth. There's no vibes at all through the bike, through the pegs. It's very clever, actually. They've done a wonderful job. I don't think it's any more vibey than what the Street Triple is. I think they're about the same from a vibe yeah. point of view. And the brakes are definitely, the brakes are fantastic on both. But the Duke's just a little bit sharper on the brakes, isn't it? Not only the, the suspension and the handling, but the brakes are sharper as well. Let's do another little roll on, Greg, while we're here. Another little, another little, let's do a 50 mile an hour top, let's do a top gear roll on. Top, top gear? gear roll on. Yeah. 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 Okay, I'm in six. Ready? You do the count in. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> yeah, not as much as I thought actually. Yeah, but who rides like that though in Top Gear? <laughs> Some people. <laughs> Do they? Here we go, a bit of a left hand did the chuck around. You don't need more than this, do you? For the road. Definitely not. Right, I'm in sport mode, so I now have some traction control. So the, I've got, the street... has, this, has, this got, has this got wheelie control now then? Yeah, if you've got traction on, you've got wheelie control yeah. back, yeah. yeah. Through the box, first gear. First uh, gear. First gear roll on at, at 20, 15 miles Ready. an hour. Three, two, one, go! Was that second for you? Is that second gear on the no. Duke then? First gear. Oh, I went second. I thought you we said, said first, second. Then. Gears. Yeah, then, we, then we said second then. Oh, no, it's first. <laughs> I was going to say the way you took off. Turn around in the pub, we'll have to do it again. Yeah. Gosh, she's, um, she goes well to KTM though. Bloody hell. It's shot off then like a scolded cat. <laughs> <laughs> well, right, second first gear, yeah? Second or first? Well, you, you wanted well. Let's do first then. I was just first trying to keep it a little, a little less lively. Three. Two, one, go! <laughs> that was a bit of wheelie action. It's definitely quick, that's definitely quick, that's 890. Let's have a swap back, because we need to see the weight difference. Pulling up here, there's a little turning in there. They're a bit lively in first gear, aren't they? <laughs> that's for sure. 25 mile an hour, second gear. Roll on test. You count it in. Three, two, one. <laughs> Woohoo! Let's have us pull in here, Greg. We'll do a swap over. They're both coming out. The Triumph is wheeling in as well. You were wheeling. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. To make it fair, because of the weight difference, we'll do a swap. So far, the Duke's cleaning up. Yeah, they're swap bikes. Do you see it wheeling though? It's like, Christ. Yeah, that was coming up. This, this is more aggressive, isn't it? It's like, woo! Right, second gear roll on me on the 890 this time. Come alongside them. So ready in three, two, one, go! <laughs> Nothing in it between them. Even I think the 890 is. I think the 890 is a little bit quicker. I think even though the Triumph has got more power on the on the spec sheet, in reality the 890 seems to be faster. Yeah, I think it is a little bit faster because it's it's definitely got more. It's, it's it goes instantly, whereas the Triumph has to build. But the top end of the KTM is still surprised. It doesn't run out of puff. It keeps going. I thought the Triumph was going to pull it back in again at the top, but yeah, it, it doesn't, does it? There's not enough time no. for that, and, and it's not that different. Right, listen, help me out here then, because I want to turn the traction off now. What do I do? Right, press the mode button. Yeah. Until you get to the race the track one. 
That's it, that one. Now press it in, that's it. And that's then it. click OK to that about something being disabled. It's done, it's got TC off. It's got yeah, in, that's it? it, yeah. But if you click that button again, it'll get rid of that error message. There we go. How'd you do on this? Hit the set button. Oh, yeah. Go down to motorcycle and then hold it down there. Oh, close the throttle. throttle. Yeah, just let go of the throttle. And then it should say off. Yeah. It's a That's bit it. of a faff, isn't it? Why, then, why do they make it such a faff, these manufacturers? God, it is quick, this. I know, it is, isn't it? I just love how you can just abuse the front brake and its suspension's so good. You know, you can trail brake in ridiculously and it just feels like it's ultimate grip, doesn't it? It's unbelievable. Ooh. She wheelie's fine. So off camera, you know, if the wheel were to come up a little bit, and it the seems that the drive, yeah, the drive is slightly better if the wheel accidentally comes up while you're riding. God, dearie me, doesn't she oh. wheelie? <laughs> <laughs> I, I do look at look at. I do love the look of it though, don't you? I mean, look at the seat cow. It, yeah, I mean, I think riding them aside, I think on balance, if I were to go and buy one. I'd go for the KTM, and I do agree. I think it's physically a little bit too small. It doesn't feel too small when you're riding it, but you do look a little bit... We all look a bit big on it, because we're fairly big. But I do think the Triumph looks more premium. You know, what I don't like about the KTM is all the money's gone... Well, I do like it. All the money's gone into the suspension, the chassis, the engine. But then, you know, the plastics, the switch gear, it, it's a little bit... It feels a bit cheap, if I'm brutally honest, and I'm not a big lover, whereas the Triumph... It's definitely as an engineering piece of metal. It, it just fits together. But also yeah. on the KTM, I don't like this big space between the front wheel here. It no, looks, it, 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 you know, this looks like it's missing something it at does, the front. It, it does, and you know, you've got that sort of oil cooler there on the front, which doesn't look particularly attractive. You get the nice belly pan, don't you, on the yeah. on the Triumph? And I'm with you. All these sort of flowing lines, the tank, the paint quality looks beautiful as well, doesn't it? And the, the 20, it definitely looks better, the 2023, doesn't yeah. it? With the way they've done all these yeah. cows. It, it, I know they've reduced the size of the tank, I think, to get that look. Yeah, but it works. But it, it, looks well, it nice. does work. It does look you know, really even nice. Even the back end, it just looks beautifully proportioned, all flying off the seat, whereas, again, the KTM's a little bit, you know, this is all a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And the tail, I mean, no tail tides, you change them straight away, but... Oh, yeah, I mean, you can't, it, that's ridiculous. It makes it more difficult, though, doesn't it? Because I guess the indicators are... Well, I suppose they're all like that, really, aren't they? No, it's fine. There, there are plenty of tail tidy options for the KTM, which include an integrated tail light. And having owned one, it's just plug and play. It's one plug. It's dead easy, actually. So that's, that's not an issue, really. What a great test. Both fantastic bikes. I actually think all you'd ever need right here. But call it, Chopsy. What's your favourite then, the Triumph? I, I would go... I prefer the riding dynamics of the 890. But being a little bit bigger, I think the Triumph fits me better. So I think I'd get the Triumph. And it's, it is... You know, it, they're, so, they're so close. I mean, that is better dynamically, but that's not, you know, it's not like that's terrible. It's not that far behind. And, and in reality, up the hill climb, it, we were both quick on them. Do you know what I mean? And I just think that fits me better being a bigger guy. So what I would go for the Triumph. What about you? I'd, I'd go for the KTM if I was in buying mode, I think, just on balance. And I'd make a few mods to make it look a little bit nicer because I think that it, it's just an impressive bike to ride. It's like it's on rails or something. It just feels incredible. Welcome to a gorgeous Snetterton. The bike has been fantastic. Absolutely loved my little trip down here on this machine. We're here today to learn how to ride these brilliant Tiger Adventure bikes off-road. Enjoy a bit of sunshine, good food, moderately okay company, and Jopsy, roll the intro. I'll be doing that in two minutes. <laughs> My foot was stuck on the peg. Oh, jeez. Welcome to Bedford Autodrome and welcome to the California Superbike School, level four. Look at the views, unbelievable. You wouldn't get to see views like that if you stick to the tarmac, that's for sure. But in off-road, forget about it. 100 mile hour first gear.
Sandhouse.